Five Big Ten players go in the first round of the NBA draft. Two Michigan players in the top 15. Plus, we turn to Tide and start talking Big Ten college football. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. As always, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled you're here with me, part of the club. Welcome aboard. Here's what we're going to do on today's show. We're going to take one more look at the NBA draft and all the Big Ten players that went in the first round. Some amazing stories. I'll give you a quick analysis of all that. Then we're just a few weeks away from Big Ten football media days in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Field. If I were there right now, and if it was going on right now, I would have one specific question for each and every coach. And I'm going to tell you what that question is as we look ahead to the college football season. Also, uh, as you know, we do our benchmarks at the end of the show each day, and Fridays are pigskin picks. Now, we're not going to be picking football games yet today, but we do have early lines out, and I have an analysis of each and every one of those as well. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten. For free, wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right, so the NBA draft started out pretty much like everybody thought it would. Uh, Victor Wimbenyama, 7'4", 7'5", he says, kid out of France. He goes to San Antonio, number one pick in the draft. Number two, Brandon Miller out of Alabama, the SEC Player of the Year. He goes to Charlotte. This is the last draft that Michael Jordan will be in charge of before he officially sells the team, so he makes that pick. And then at number three, Scoot Henderson. Nice suit on draft night, by the way. Out of the G League, going to Portland, and this is pretty much it. Uh, Dame Lillard, look for him to be traded at some point. Uh, but that that's how the top three went. Now, how did our Big Ten players go? The first one out of the box, number 11, Orlando. Jed Howard, Jawan Howard's son out of Michigan, is the first Big Ten player drafted. And the, look, they really like the ability of this kid to shoot. He can shoot from the logo. He's got great footwork. And he, uh, he is going to fit in nicely up there uh, with his shooting ability. They like that very much, that 37% from three-point land. And then a couple picks later, a few picks later, at 15, the Atlanta Hawks take his teammate, Kobe Bufkin and Kobe was a late bloomer this was a guy that got a lot of people's attention at the combine and the workouts and uh, from uh, last year to this year in the basketball season improved his points per game by 11 uh, big jump there good defensive player had 43 steals this particular season and around the rim, the guy finishes like 71% on his uh, inside shots around the rim. So this is a, this is a guy that's going to fit in very well for Atlanta. He'll take a little pressure off of Trey Young. I mean, if Trey Young's even still there, I don't know what the Hawks are going to be doing with their roster moving forward. They got a lot of questions there, but they get Bufkin. So how about that? Two Michigan Wolverines going in the top 15 of the NBA draft. And I got to thinking, you got two top 15 players on your team plus Hunter Dickinson, and you don't make the NCAA tournament? Ah, just throwing that out there. Sorry, Michigan fan. Interesting question, though. Nevertheless, and of course, we know Dickinson's not there anymore transferring out, so uh, a lot of uh, new blood can be coming into Michigan for Jawan Howard. But Jawan was there draft night with his son, Jet Howard, a very proud family, and congratulations to all of them. The next player out of the Big Ten off the board goes at number 17 to the Los Angeles Lakers and Indiana freshman Jalen hood Shafino. Uh, this is going to be a great spot for him. Uh, however long LeBron and AD remain there, I don't know, but Jalen hood Shafino could grow into, he's just 20 years old, can grow into a future star at Los Angeles. Um, by the way, going by the nickname Fino, which he says failure is not an option. It's a uh, a uh, little nickname that he has. Now, he's been inconsistent with his three. I mean, some nights he lights it up and some he doesn't. He's definitely going to have to get better there, but he's young. 
plenty of time to do that. He's excellent, excellent on the pick and roll, which is half the NBA right now. And uh, also, he's got a great mid-range uh, pull-up jump shot, which is a lost art in the NBA these days. So, again, this guy's got all sorts of potential. The Lakers got themselves a future star player. Uh, next in the draft, Chris Murray goes number 23 to Portland, the power forward out of Iowa. And as I mentioned earlier at the top of the podcast, they got Scoot Henderson. So Portland getting a guard, and now they have a power forward. And uh, Chris Murray, look, he's not his brother. His twin brother was the top five pick, uh, fourth pick uh, for Sacramento the year before. But he's still ready to go. He's a plug -in. He can play right now. And he can play offense and defense. He's a, one of those three and D guys. He can shoot threes and play defense for you. And I, I think he's going to have a very successful career right away at Portland. And, um, you know, a lot of in, exciting things going on with Portland. Again, we're on Dame watch now, uh, whether he'll be traded or not. And then at 28, Bryce Sensible, a very intriguing player out of Ohio State. He was the first player for the Buckeyes, the first freshman to lead the Buckeyes in scoring since 2015 and got a nice shot, 41% from three land, very good shooter, and a 6'11 wingspan on top of that. He can get in your way, and I think still plenty of upside there, but he goes to the Utah Jazz at number 28. So those were the five guys out of the Big Ten that went in the first round. Again, Howard and Bufkin out of Michigan, Hood Shafino out of Indiana, Murray and Sensabaugh going. And then early in the second round, uh, Jalen Pickett gets picked up by the Pacers at 32. Now he's going to be going to Denver. That was part of a deal that was worked out. And at 46, the Hawks ended up taking Seth Lundy. So two Penn State players going early in the second round as well. And guys that can shoot the ball and I think we'll do very well in the NBA. So we've been talking about this a couple of days. This is how it's all shaken out with the NBA and then the summer league. We'll keep an eye on some of these guys as well. Now, I'm a basketball fan. I love basketball. So I don't want to say, hey, we're going to push basketball aside. But now that the NBA draft is taking place, kind of sets the table for us to really go wall-to-wall -wall football. And I know you're all excited about that. Football drives everything. Big 10 football coming up. And as I mentioned, the media days with the coaches is coming up in July in Indianapolis. And uh, then it's the camps and practices. And then, boom, we're into the games. So we're going to have a lot of fun there. I've got a lot of questions. I'm going to pretend the media days are going on right now. In a minute, I'm going to give you one key question for each and every coach on what I would ask them if they were right in front of me right now, right here. And someday we'll have them all on here on the Lockdown Big Ten Podcast. But if they were here today, one driving question for you. So whatever, whoever your favorite team is in the Big Ten, I'll tell you what that question is going to be for your coach. But first, we're brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dogs shorts do the exact thing that uh, the Lululemon does, but they fit way better. Um, they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of that stiff, restricting cotton that can bind on you when you're sitting in them. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing Cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches. So you get that way slimmer fit. And we all like to look slimmer, don't we? Uh, without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So here's what you need to do. If you do it, you make me look good too. But it'll help you out. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's Bird Dogs dot com slash locked on college for a free yeti style tumbler and you won't want to take your bird dogs off we absolutely promise you that all right uh as we continue on here lots to get to i told you uh media days we're going to focus on those in just a moment but i want to take this opportunity to thank you thank you very much for finding Lockdown Big Ten and making it your first listen every single day. Every day is our next show. We'll take an early look at Michigan football. I know we're talking about all the coaches here today and uh, each and every team, but we're going to start focusing day-to-day -day 
individually on each of the teams moving forward for the next couple of weeks. I, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you do too. Uh, we're going to look at the Michigan football team starting on Monday and uh, be sure to, to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube right now, subscribe, share, follow, and like locked on big 10, wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Big 10 media days, July 26th and 27th at Lucas oil stadium in Indianapolis. And Here's the order of the coaches and the questions I would ask them right now. Uh, first out of the box is Illinois football coach Brett Bielema on that uh, Wednesday. Look, this is his third season. I would ask him about, is, is he going to take yet another step up? Had a nice year last year. Eight wins. Lost a lot. Good talent to the, to the NFL draft. But this could be another big step up for Brett Bielema in just year three. All his players in place. And if he could jump up from his eight-win season last year, it could be some special things for the Fighting Illini this year. Iowa's Kirk Ferentz is next. Can, can you believe Kirk Ferentz? A quarter of a century at Iowa. 25 years as the head coach. That never happens. He is ensconced. Now, the thing I would ask him about is his offense. That was a big problem last year. Really had trouble scoring. And in fact, you know, his son, uh, Brian, still the offensive coordinator again this year. But in order to remain in that position, they had to agree to some benchmarks and some conditions. And if they don't hit them this year, they're going to have to be uh, forced to make a change at offensive coordinator, which would be a tough thing for Kirk Ferentz to do, considering that's his son. Ask him all about that. I'm sure a lot of people will. Uh, next is uh, Michigan State's Mel Tucker. I don't know how I'd ask this, but this is what I'm thinking. But I stuck a microphone in his face. I said, you know, since you signed that $95 million extension, you haven't won a lot of football games. Um, so, you know, I'd like to get his opinion on where his program is right now and if they're able to turn the tide as they have struggled quite a bit. After that is Northwestern's Pat Fitzgerald. They're coming off a win in which they just won one game last year. And now there's some ability there. Look, I remember a game in November against Ohio State that they had Ohio State on the ropes in the first half. I think they, uh, Ohio State only won that game, 21-7. Brutally raw, ugly day weather-wise in November uh, in Illinois there at Northwestern. But um, – yeah, they got to they gotta get more than one win. There's no doubt about that. And then speaking of Ohio State, next one up is uh, Ohio State's Ryan Day. A lot of questions there. Uh, C.J. Stroud is gone. They got two guys competing for quarterback. What's the situation there? And, of course, uh, he's going to have a new play caller on offense, kind of tweaking some things. And then somebody's going to ask it. It's media day. Ryan Day. Are you going to beat Michigan this year? You know it's coming. It's coming. Uh, lost two years in a row to him, so uh, we'll see how he answers that question. Uh, Penn State's James Franklin follows him, and I keep saying this about Penn State last year. They had a really, really good season. They had two losses. Guess who they lost to? They lost to Michigan, and they lost to Ohio State, and that's it. It kind of flew under the radar of, of, of having a, a really, really, really good season last year. And then finally, uh, Rutgers' Greg Schiano will close out the Wednesday session. And they're coming off a five-win season last year, trying to get new facilities out there. But you know what? Greg Schiano's the guy for that job. That is not the sexiest job in the world by any stretch. But he seems to love it there. Very loyal to school. His second stint. And if anybody's going to get it turned around, I think it's going to be Greg Schiano. So you can ask him about that and where he thinks the program is at this, that, this particular point. Then we take a break. And then Thursday, we get everybody else. Thursday, July 27th. Indiana's Tom Allen starts it out. And it'll be quite popular there. There'll be a lot of Indiana media there since it's in Indianapolis. And look, last year was a disappointing season. There's no question about it. They went through like four or five quarterbacks injuries. It was, it was a tough year, by the way. We'll ask them about the quarterback situation coming off the spring. Who's going to take that first snap against Ohio State in their season opener? More on that in a minute, by the way. When Maryland's Michael Loxley comes up, 
I don't know what where Maryland's program is. I do know this. They are having trouble getting some enthusiasm for that program right now. I mean, they, they only averaged like 22,000 people per home game last year. That's got to change. So maybe ask him about that. He'll be followed by Michigan's Jim Harbaugh, and that'll be a big draw, obviously. And people will ask him about his expectations. Plus, look, Jim flirts with an NFL job every single year. And the relationship he has with Michigan, they seem to be cool with it. All right. And he'll dabble. And then he comes back to Michigan and they're fine. And they redo the contract. But just read this week that that uh, latest contract agreement has not been signed yet. Maybe, maybe Ward Emanuel, the athletic director is cool with it, but just a little note to consider. Um, Ben Minnesota's PJ Fleck. Look, you got to ask him, look, do you have any bright spots? And what's he going to say? He's not going to say, he's going to say, yeah, we got some things to look forward to, but he has a very inexperienced team and a very tough schedule. And it's going to be tough for PJ Fleck. Then the next three coaches coming out on Thursday, very interesting because they're all new to the league. Nebraska, you got Matt Rule. All right. He's got experience, had a pretty good run at Baylor. Didn't do so good with the Carolina Panthers in the NFL. Now he's at Nebraska. Ryan Walters at Purdue, new coach, former defensive coordinator with Brett Bielema at Illinois. What are his plans for the Boilermakers? They got themselves a new quarterback from, from uh, the um, uh, Texas, Texas. And we'll, we'll talk about that in our pigskin pick segment coming up in just a bit. And then uh, Luke Fickle, new to Wisconsin, Camp Randall coming off of Cincinnati. So, a lot of interesting stuff. And by the way, you can watch those media days on the Big Ten Network and also on the Fox Sports app, too. So uh, anyway, uh, lots of ways to watch it. And then we're going to be diving in here on uh, Lockdown Big Ten left and right uh, every day that week. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, coming up, I am going to share with you on how our Friday pigskin pick segments will work during the season. So um, we'll do all that, plus uh, an early look on all the betting lines coming up here on Locked On Big Ten. All right, um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, each, uh, each day we have this uh, segment. It's different every day. Benchmarks, if you will. And what I want to do on Fridays is pigskin picks and the basketball season. We'll do basketball picks and whatnot. Uh, but first let's take an early look at the big 10 games uh, head to head with uh, teams going against each other. This, I like this. The big 10 does this every year. Uh, a lot of teams will, will start off with a big 10 game instead of some cupcake or whatever. These are the early point spreads for uh, our pigskin picks. Nebraska and Minnesota uh, kick it off on Thursday. August 31st, as you can see, uh, Minnesota is an eight-point favorite in this game. P.J. Fleck going to have to row the boat. That's an 8 p.m. Fox game going against Matt Rule in his debut for Nebraska on the road. Um, also, when we do our picks, I, we're probably just going to go straight up money line winners here. We'll let the big boys handle the point spreads and um, you know whatever you choose to do. But we'll uh, we'll keep it simple throughout the year. But I will give you the point spreads as a public service on my part here on lockdown big 10 uh ohio state a 27 and a half point favorite as we sit against the indiana hoosiers they'll be opening it up in bloomington indiana on saturday september 2nd and then on sunday september 3rd it's kind of a big deal here northwestern at Rutgers. Rutgers a five point favorite as we speak today this is kind of the only game in town right it, it uh, because it's uh, the, the NFL preseason is over. It's Labor Day weekend and you get yourself a Sunday game or two. This one, Big Ten, Northwestern and Rutgers. So five point favorites, Rutgers as we speak. So that's a look at all of those uh, head to head Big Ten games. But um, I am going to also take a look at some of these other ones as well to kind of get you on board real quick. So Friday, September 1st, Central Michigan is taking on Michigan State. Michigan State, a 15-point favorite. That's a 7 p.m. game on FS1. Big game for Mel Tucker. Got to win that one. Uh, also, Iowa hosting Iowa's, uh, Utah State on Saturday, September 2nd. 
And uh, again, uh, they didn't score 21 points in a game. I don't know how they're 21 point favorites in this particular game. Last year, they really struggled with offense. So we'll see what Kirk Ferentz has there. I mentioned earlier, Michigan, a 36 and a half point favorite against East Carolina, Jim Harbaugh and JJ McCarthy. Uh, a lot of expectations, but do they come out of the box? You know, East Carolina is not going to be a horrible team this year by any stretch. Look, Michigan's going to win the game. They're going to win the game comfortably. But 36 and a half points for the opening week, Michigan's got to be pretty sharp to hit that, uh, that particular point spread. Also, Fresno State is at Purdue at Ross Aid Stadium. Purdue a six point favorite there. Hudson Card is the quarterback from Texas that transferred in for Ryan Walters. Also, Towson taking on Maryland. No line on that game right now. Wisconsin, it'll be Luke Fickle's debut at Camp Randall against Buffalo. He's a 24-point favorite in that game. And then uh, Brett Bielema's uh, Illinois fighting Illini, 11-point favorites against Toledo in their game. And West Virginia is at Penn State, James Franklin's team, a 19-and-a-half-point favorite. And again, I, keep, I can't drive home enough. Last year, lost to Michigan and Ohio State, beat everybody else. So... Um, that's it. Those are the games. And when we get closer to it, we'll make our picks. Maybe do some more futures bets, uh, suggestions between now and then before we get to the season. And that's how we're going to do it. I want to thank you for making lockdown big 10 your first listen every single day, every dayers you out there. Our next show, we'll take an early look at Michigan football. Don't worry. We'll cover your favorite team too. If it's not the Wolverines, we'll do all that, but uh, we always invite you into our club here with Lockdown Big Ten. Many ways for you to stay in contact with me. And uh, I suggest right now, while we're getting going, uh, Twitter. Twitter. At Talk Big Ten. Tweet at me. I'll tweet you back. All right? And again, one more reminder. Be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. And you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it is available each and every day. Now, check out Lockdown Sports today that podcast for the latest on everything going on in sports. That's it for today. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm Craig Sheeman for Locked On Big Ten. We'll see you next time.